hello. <laughs> All right, um, we'll let a couple of people just come in in the next couple of minutes and then we'll get started. Pam, can you see me? No. Right, hang on. There you go. Where am I? I can't see me on the top. All right, Elaine. <laughs> Then. Sorry, just what are you doing? Right, okay. Right, how many people have we got in now, Ali? We've got one, two, just three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six. Yeah. Okay. Ten, including us, so we can get started if you like. Okay. Yeah, we'll get started. Um, all right. Um, hello to everybody who's joined us today um, for our first Dimensions webinar. Um, the topic of today is all about lockdown and how those issues, have there been any issues after coming back and what post lockdown looks like and then moving into the summer term and beyond. Um, joining us today is Mark Horsley. He is the assistant head at um, Woodland View Primary School in Northampton. Um, I'm Hannah Homer. I have worked, I've got several hats that I wear. I work for Dimensions as a curriculum consultant and I also work at a small school in Hong Kong, um, HKILA. Um, it's nice to be joined by a couple of my colleagues today, Justine and Lovely, which is really nice. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce We've introduced Mark. He's going to talk a little bit about himself and what he does at school and what his school is like. So over to you, Mark. Who are you? What do you do? What's your school like? Thank you. Yep. So, uh, yeah, my name's Mark Horsley and I'm at Woodland View Primary School. I'm um, assistant head, but I've also been um, acting deputy head for the last uh, couple of years. Uh, I've been, I started at this school actually as an NQT when I was 21 and I taught here for eight years and then I went to a couple of different schools to gain some more experience um, and came back as assistant head uh, six years ago. So that, that's sort of my journey uh, to Woodland View. But we're a, we're a school in Northampton, a two form entry primary school, um, almost full. So I think we've got 409 children at the moment. Um, yeah, that's, that's me and that's our school. Uh, we, but we, we're very proud of our school. We think we, we have um, a school with a, a very, very friendly ethos. That's been a, a key thing for us. We, we, we think it's important that um, first and foremost, your school has that friendly ethos and environment and atmosphere. And we're also a school that we try to be different as well. We try to be um, unique and we try and be creative. And um, a few years ago, we had a, a child that had left our school and had gone up into year seven and had a conversation with, with family members and they were talking about their old primary schools and, and the child said, um, I didn't go to a normal, normal primary school, I went to Woodland View. And we were told that and so that's sort of been our motto for a, for a few years that we're, um, we're not a normal school, we hope that's a compliment, um, but we, we're Woodland View and we try and do things where we can a bit differently and uniquely. Fabulous. Sounds like a great place to be. Fantastic. So, as mentioned, this is all about you know lock, uh, lockdown, COVID restrictions, and what school looks like. Um, Mark has had some questions sent to him, which I'm going to ask him throughout this webinar. If you want to, if there's anything that doesn't come up during our conversation, and you want to ask a question, then there is the chat function at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Um, feel free to stick some questions in there. Ali is monitoring those. Um, and if we get a chance, we'll ask them. If not, then I'll forward them on to Mark and he will um, answer them at a later date and pop them on a blog. So, Mark, school closure. Obviously, there's been two in the UK. A um, bit different to here for us in Hong Kong. We'll have a little bit of discussion about that during our chat. Um, so, what did your initially? What did your school closure look like? When it first happened, how did you manage that? I think that um, all schools are going to have their own stories and there'll be things I'm sure that will be similar and resonate with people and, and there'll be things that will be different and unique to us. We, 
like everybody, we're in that bit of a panic phase, really. This was very un unpredictable at the time. And um, we had a, a period of a, a few days to try and get ready for this school closure when it was confirmed. And we sent out um, information to parents to ask for requests to key worker places. That One of the key things, obviously, was to know how many children would be starting with us as key worker children. And um, trying to collect that information and, and, and prepare for that. And our results in that crazy, hectic week before schools locked down, um, I think we had over 100 parents that had said they were requesting a key worker place. When we got to the very end of the week, parents were then making decisions about being able to be at home with their children and, and so on. And, and we got to Sunday evening and we were expecting about 60 children, I think, to come in on Monday morning. And it was a lot of work, obviously, in getting in staffing that and getting the school site ready for those 60 key worker children. And, um, and on that Monday morning, 16 children turned up out of what we were expecting to be 60. And we were really surprised by that. And as the um, school closure continued, actually we averaged only six, about six children a day. So parents obviously had changing of circumstances and changing of feelings, and it was such a worrying time for everybody. But we ended up having, as I said, about six children a day for that first lockdown. So that, that was very, very different in comparison to the most recent lockdown that we've had this year. With the first lockdown, the remote education was a brand new thing for everybody. It was a brand new thing for us. And that was, I was overseeing our remote education offer and, um, and, a, and an awful amount of work obviously went into setting that all up. But for the first lockdown, we were only setting one task a day. Monday to Thursday, one task a day only. And then on a Friday, um, a member of SLT would, would put together a nice fun task for, for parents to do if they, they could, or sorry, families to do if they could and children to if they could. So it was much more relaxed. It was, it was a much different feel to it. Obviously, the lockdown this time around uh, was completely different. Again, we had um, very, very little notice um, from, uh, from Boris that that was going to be happening. So when we sent out our information to parents again and got our requests in, we had a similar number of requests, uh, over 100 requests for, for children. And we didn't know what to expect, whether we would have five or six again or, or whatever, but we actually had in the 90s. Um, so we averaged about 95, 96 children a day during the, the second lockdown. So completely different. That, that's Although that's only a quarter of our school, that's a large number to have at school and yeah. to organise and to uh, supervise and to obviously educate and so on. So, so that was really tricky. And then the children at home, which was three quarters of our children, you, you can't forget about them just because you've got quite a, a busy full school. The majority of our children were actually at home. So remote education, again, um, was used. And plus the expectation of that, as we all know, was, was vastly different this time. So we were having a full schedule of learning every day. Yeah. Um, we had three lessons a day, what English. Of, what kind of platforms did you go to then as your sort of... Um, that you would deliver your curriculum on? Did it change? Did you find things that worked better? Um, I mean, here in Hong Kong, we started off doing uh, YouTube videos and directing people to that. Um, and then we switched on, we did a bit on um, Google, we did Google Classroom, um, that's been our mainstay. And um, But we flitted between a few things to get to that point that is a successful, continually running thing now. So what did you um, use and what are you using um, up to this point so we're using google classroom and we've in the last couple of years we've been moving towards google generally for lots of things and when um when this first lockdown neared there was there was a feeling that this might happen and we trialed it in our year six we trialed google classroom simply because one of our teachers in year six had used google classroom before google was something we were moving towards as a school anyway and we felt like we didn't have the time to really explore lots and lots of different options so we thought right we need to probably trial something where we can so we managed to to have a few days of Google Classroom for the children that we had in year six at school just to see if it was something that we could use and get to grips with. 
and then lockdown obviously happened so google classroom we went straight to that for those reasons we didn't have the the time to explore lots of different options and because we got the whole school onto google classroom we got all of our children onto google classroom by the end of the first lockdown i think we were up to 98 99 percent of children were using google classroom they were in their classrooms and and they we had to obviously do all this thinking on your feet where we were um, guiding them through how to use it and how to set work and teachers were gaining more confidence and so on so it so it worked well in that first lockdown so we've kept google classroom because it was established at that point and it's just been established i know there's lots of the good things out there my, my daughter for example does microsoft teams with her school and that's been really successful so, so i know there's lots of things yeah. out there um, that have their pluses and minuses so google classroom was established as a we needed something and we've made it work well for us so we've, we've been able to maintain that okay. are you going to continue with it are you going to use it as a bit of a you know if, if anybody's away from school for any period of time you know that they can still access um, some of the learning that they may miss out on if they're not in the classroom is it going to be a thing that kind of ticks away in the background or are you, now that the children are back is it going to be sort of not necessarily shelved but kind of kept to one side for the time being no, we st I think because we've got it so well established and teachers are really confident with it and children are confident with it and our our numbers are high in terms of the the children during lockdown that regularly use Google Classroom um, so we're keeping it and when we were back at school in the autumn term and, and we're back at school now we've used Google Classroom for homework before then we had homework books and books were going to and from school but we've made that move that our homework now is on google classroom so even though we came back to school in september our weekly homework was on google classroom it kept that ticking along it kept the usage going and um, and then obviously second lockdown we've we've used it and we've come back to school and we're still using google classroom so we've changed we've obviously made made changes along the way the children that have had to self-isolate They've, they've got a classroom, they've got work, they're ready to go, we've got everything ticking over. So it's one of those things, and I'm sure everybody in all schools are thinking about when, if and when COVID finally does completely go, what are we going to keep, what's going to stay, what's going to change because of it. I think for us, online homework, Google Classroom will be something that we probably keep, and we, we keep going with it even though we do have um, a little bit of resistance because there are issues with barriers with technology obviously and families that, that don't necessarily have that technology but we'll keep it and we've also one of the things that we've done which is which has been excellent and we've used google classroom for it is we've created our own online reading records because again up until covid all of our reading records were paper reading record books that would go home and, and to school but we've managed to use google classroom to support our very own bespoke online reading records so again during lockdowns and even now our reading records are online um, and, and it's something else that we've been able to create because we had to but actually we quite like it and um and it, it's giving us a good excuse if you like to persist with these things to see if actually when covid is, is finished we yeah. we may find that these these practices are better yeah i think um you know we i can kind of relate to that in the same way in that um, we um, have actually branched out a little bit further to create a home learning department of our school. Um, we have like a few families that really felt that their kids really thrived on wor working from home. The situation here is obviously very different to what it is in the UK, you know, the school attendance and homeschooling and that kind of approach. Um, but we've got a few children now who um, they've relocated um back to home countries because of changes in jobs for their parents and they needed something just to keep them going so we've used our google classroom now as not only to upload work for our kids at school so if they miss anything it's always on the on the gc for them but we also now use it as um as a, as a teaching tool for a different approach so i head that up in terms of I have a group of children and I see that you know they have access to Zoom if they want to Zoom with me or they just upload their work and we monitor it and check it for them and it can be tweaked, it can be tailored to what they need. So it's really good to see that actually these things that were initially quite scary, you know, what on earth are we going to do to get work to, to people um, is actually working working for the better and you find finding new things all the time that really work really, really well. Um, I'm just going to follow up with that on kind of like 
obviously you're a dimension school how did you um use the dimensions curriculum during your school closure did you keep things going as they are as the you know in school teaching packs did you access some of the at home materials were there any of the other um I know we chatted earlier in the week and you said you didn't use the boomerang, but did you use any of the other resources that were put out to schools to help kids in and out of school? Well, we found that from, from our, our Dimensions journey, we're quite new to Dimensions. We, we're a couple of years in and un, unfortunately COVID got in our way because we had planned this, this huge launch of our Dimensions curriculum. We had a, a teacher conference, which was an overnight weekend conference, which was all about Dimensions, ready to launch in... Um, 2000 uh, it was the, at the very start of 2020 in January and um, and our summer term was going to be our term to pick a couple of the units couple of the themes per year group and, and launch in now because we had year six um, back at school after June and we had reception children and, and we still had the home learning obviously go it going on we were able to in use dimensions and start it it wasn't the start we wanted because we wanted 400 children in school and to launch it with all of the the characters and the four c's and everything um, but we were still able to launch it in a way that got teachers a, a chance to get to grips of it and children to be introduced to certain elements of it um, but going into September when everybody was back we were able to start with our themes in our order autumn themes with the first C um, and, and launch that with, with the children and we found that we could get straight into it um, we didn't want to um, tiptoe around the curriculum we thought that the children were ready and wanting to have that breadth immediately and we, we did do we have done um, a catch-up program using pixel and English and maths and I might talk a bit more about that later on but but dimensions we wanted to launch in because it really gives you that breadth um, teachers have had a lot of time to get their heads around the planning and how to integrate that into their um, into their teams and their year group so from our point of view for, for lockdowns and when the children were back we found it very easy to select um, work from the themes because we weren't setting a full full non-core curriculum we were able to pick the things that would work and in every theme there were things that actually this would be better in school with a full class with everybody in and there were things that transferred better as an online task but because we were doing one non-core lesson a day we were able to be quite selective and um and keep that going cool that's great yeah i think that's um you know the way that that's the great thing about it right you can have a, you know you can use it in lots of different ways that's the whole point that it is you know you can take it and do with it as you see fit and what works best for you so good to see that it's working in lots of different ways um we mentioned the access to technology obviously it came up in the news quite a lot of um you know children being offered ipads or laptops and not getting so you said you had a few families that did, didn't have access. Do you generally feel that most people were able to um, access everything that you put out there? Well, we had to have some. Oh, just hold. Sorry, hold on one moment. <laughs> sorry, the um, site supervisor was just streaming the grass outside my window. Sorry. Um, so, in terms of our community, mm -hmm. the the vast majority of people do have access to technology at home and that wasn't a barrier as such we did have um, a few families like you mentioned there that we loaned ipads to so that it worked for them um but one of our key issues was a lot of our families we have both parents at home full-time working and particularly in this this latest lockdown where a lot more families seem to be working through it we have parents working full-time nine to five or beyond at home both of them and then their children that had to access work as well which was we had parents telling us we're both working full-time from home i've got two or three children that have got a full-time um, remote education offer how can we support them and do our jobs so it wasn't necessarily the technology it was being able to to families to cope and and do what they can our, one of our messages which we use for both lockdowns we again 
made really, really clear to our parents was this is all about doing what you can because everybody had their own circumstances. We understand that. Most of our teachers have children themselves and young children at a primary age. So we all feel how difficult it is um, to, to teach at home, to support your child at home. Lots of our teachers said that they would rather teach 30 different children than their one child at home during um, remote education. And, and I think that, so we sit, sympathize and empathize with, with all of that so we were trying to support families the best that we could so one of the things that we did was we created paper packs so our paper packs were um, the online tasks that were set but we had paper resources for them and we put them in packs so I'll just show you a front cover of, of what I mean okay so this is a year one paper pack inside the tasks for that week are inside in a plastic wallet, year one, and there's some instructions in there on how to photograph it and upload your photo to Google Classroom. But inside here, parents were able to collect a paper pack and give them the sheets, give them the activity sheets and any resources so that the iPads, the laptops, the it wasn't a barrier for children. Parents could be working at home and it would be easier to give them those paper copies rather than having to support them on technology. So we did that, which the first thing we, we thought about was we need to be careful from a COVID point of view because we need to get these paper packs to parents and we need to do that safely. So we were re really, really careful on how we did that. We had paper pack collection days on a Monday where they would collect Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday's work. And we had collections on a Thursday where they would collect Thursday's and Friday's work. We had a sort of station outside of the front of our school on lots of tables with different boxes where the pack resources had been quarantined for 48 hours before going in the boxes. We had staff with masks who were distanced from the table. We had sanitizer, they were wearing gloves. We had an, an hours collection point. So it wasn't collect at 9.30 and we had lots of parents queued. It was over a period of an hour, parents could come and collect. So we just had this steady flow of parents rather than inviting 80 parents or 100 parents to the gates at the same time. So parents, came and to collect those on our website they were able to request them so we knew how many were coming and um, and they requested them on a form on our website and we knew how many would come and collect and then they would come and collect those paper packs um, at the start of lockdown this is our second lockdown at the very beginning we had about 50 children using paper packs in our school by the end we we're up to the mid late 80s so a, a quite a good number of um, children were doing that and that was their way of accessing um, our remote education offer and I think if we didn't have paper packs those 80 85 children that were regularly using them there would have been a good chance that they wouldn't have done remote education they would have got further behind so for me that was a, a, a big winner and something we were we were really pleased about yeah. also because we had parents as I mentioned working full-time we we did go down the route of live lessons but we did live sessions instead of live lessons. So our lessons that we, um, that we did, we recorded, and those lessons were therefore a teacher, sorry, parents, families were able to watch those when it suited them. Because we had some families saying, well, we do our work with our children at five o'clock when we finish. We do our work with our children on a Saturday when we're not working. So we did teacher videos that were recorded so parents could choose when to um, watch them. But we did do live sessions once or twice a week so that the children did get a chance to see their friends on the screen and have that live interaction. But it was it was not to deliver a maths lesson, it was just to do some fun games and some, um, some chats and catch ups and PSHE, some, um, you know, go and find three objects that are red in your house and bring them back. So that was only just for the children's well-being, really, uh, rather than to deliver to deliver actual lessons. But as I said, that that's what worked for us because the majority of our parents are full-time working parents, and yeah. and we found that worked well. We also did a, a similar thing with the paper packs to book swaps. So every Friday, children could come to school and collect three more school reading books and they could have them for a whole week and then the following Friday they would come back bring the three back that they'd read in that week and collect three more again in the safe way of lots of tables quarantine boxes sanitizer distancing and, and all those kind of things and we had a huge take-up of that um, 
the younger children more so five and six less so I think they had a lot of books at home anyway but our reception children year one year two year three we had the majority of those year groups 40 to 50 children every Friday collecting reading books taking them home and with our online reading record they're able to fill that in as well so these were some of the approaches that it was, was us trying to support families the best we could and keep that learning ticking over. I think that's the thing, isn't it? You've got to try and, you know, you, you cater into lots of different people's schedules now and um, the way that, you know, different kids learn. You know, some kids uh, would be getting into that routine of like Saturday morning, getting down and doing everything, getting everything done. And I think actually that's where kind of our experiences, yours and mine here, are, are very similar in terms of. Um, using your online presence as a kind of way of kids getting together we did do online lessons because most of our families here families will parents will work but there will also a lot of families here have a um, helper or someone at home who is there as an adult so kids will turn up online um, and we did do our lessons through google classroom through through zoom um, eventually and but we did use it as a way of doing our assemblies so we still made sure that all of our kids got to see everybody it wasn't just the same five faces or six faces every day they got to see everybody and we made sure we kept those little routines as well of having our assembly on a friday and get letting everybody chat with each other um, and then we've also done things like recording videos so that if somebody's watch the video and they're stuck they can always go back and watch it again in some ways that actually worked better than being in a classroom because you only recorded the video once rather than repeating yourself 20 30 times sometimes they could just go go watch the video again um so yeah i think it's that access get letting people have as much access as possible um, i think the way the media played it was that there was all these kids who well, didn't have access to any laptops but actually when it comes down to it there probably is the technology in the house it's just that Five or four or five people all want to use it at once so you've got to find different ways of making sure that nobody misses out and um, so yeah I think you've really covered a lot of things there Mark I think that's really impressive um, in getting that getting things out to people and um, we're about halfway through so I'm going to move on a little bit now to the school reopening and how that looked in terms of um, not after first lockdown but like now that things seem to be fingers crossed are starting to be more normal and that more children are able to come back into school and bubbles all that kind of stuff that's come with the reopening so after second lockdown kids have come back in how did you manage your setup um, did you go down the did you do I'm guessing you did bubbles how do you, are, you, are you encouraging mask use around the school that kind of thing what's going on with you so one of the key things is, is the bubbles and that's been um, probably the most noticeable difference in our school and I'm, I'm sure that's the case in lots of schools that um, yes we have um, mask wearing from staff in communal areas and corridors and, um, and yes we have a one-way system around school and lots of other things but keeping the bubbles apart has been the biggest difference and the biggest impact I think on, on normality so getting the children back in September was um was fantastic and getting the children back again um since the, the second lockdown it is 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 brilliant and we're able to it feels normal even though this isn't normal because of what we've all gone through it this this at the moment feels the most normal it has for, for a very long time um but keeping the bubbles apart has been tricky for example lunch times and break times where we've had to find spaces where year groups can be together and um, we, we're lucky at our school we have got a lot of outdoor space but we have to um, organize that carefully utilize that space carefully and make sure that we haven't got children going out and, and mixing and crossing bubbles lunchtime is very difficult and again i'm interested to know what what other schools have done with with their lunch times because you've got we've got 400 children to feed lots of those children are having hot meals our hot meals are in the hall we've got um, children that need a playtime at lunchtime they need to run around but you've only got so many areas to have them so um, that's been a real big thing that's tweaked and changed over time for us our lunch times for example um, 
where we've got a lot of children now eating lunch in classrooms. We've got zones outside and spaces outside and slightly different timings. We've had to um, get our staff ratios a, a bit differently to make sure that we've got consistent adults with consistent bubbles rather than sometimes you, you might be able to have two or three adults just supervising a, a larger group of children from different ages actually it's got to be consistent adults consistent bubbles consistent places but also trying to mix up that as well so where certain bubbles might be having a playtime or lunch time on the on a certain area of the school it's nice if they then have a different area of the school on different days so, so all of that has been um, definitely a challenge keeping the bubbles apart assemblies with and different bubbles and and clubs are before and after school clubs are, are different bubbles so I think we definitely feel like things are normal the children do see each other they do pass each other they do see each other outside and we're all aware of each other in the classrooms and so on but um, for me that that's the key really is that is they're apart and we've talked about we wonder where things will go next we know that may the 17th is another step in the roadmap and we all know that june the 21st is another step and we're, we're talking about are we going to get to a point before the summer holidays where perhaps we can put phases together maybe can we are we going to be putting key stages together are schools just going to let loose after june the 21st and it's all mixed and it's all back to normal are, are schools going to stay in their bubbles if we keep to one way and keep kids in bubbles are parents going to be unhappy that they've missed out on things if we do mix children are parents going to be unhappy because we've we've mixed bubbles so there's a lot of uncertain things to come yeah. And uh, I think the children have been incredible. The staff have been incredible and things like the one way systems and the extra hand washing and the extra cleaning and um, keeping resources to certain year groups and things yeah. is getting to feel more normal now. But um, they've been some of the key things that it's looked like for us um, and coming back. Have your bubbles just been um, school like a year group obviously here in Hong Kong we haven't had any of that um, we've been allowed to bring back fractions of the school back at certain times so we're now currently schools are allowed to have two-thirds of their students in um, which is different things to different people if you've got a very small school like, uh, like I work in then we've had everybody in because social distancing in the classroom is impossible but if you're in a very large school then that might be a very small chunk so the bubble thing for us is a bit of an alien concept um so how did your bubbles work are you, are you just class bubbles are you have you got bubbles within the classroom I imagine that could be tricky how does it look for you so it's year group bubbles and again it, covid has, has changed over time hasn't it and i think we, we were in class bubbles going back uh, a while ago it started off as class bubbles um, but we're year group bubbles. We, in our year four, fives and sixes, we've tried more measures because, again, the guidance is saying with older children, you can try more measures. And, and for us, our interpretation was, well, our year fours, fives and sixes, we can possibly try some more things with them. So they have desks in straight lines. There's a there's a, a, a distance, a clear distance between a, a teacher at the front and the kids in, in um, at the desks. They come to school in their PE kits whereas before they would bring their PE kits in and get changed so they come to school in, in kits um, so little things like that they also we've asked them all to bring in their own pencil cases if they can whereas usually we would just have the resources to share so there's a few things that we've sort of drawn a line and said four five and six we can try to mm -hmm. put some more measures in place year three and below no point whatsoever really um, and 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 that's that's worked well the children have responded to that but it has been year group bubbles we've got 60 in a year group and they play together at break and lunchtime and they mix together so we we do try and keep them in their classrooms for example they're sat next to in rows only one or two other people and we do mix their tables up but it would normally be at the end of a week we might mix them up for the following week so there's been a couple of days in between so it, it's tricky some some of the things that we do we think you know why are we why are we doing this and other things we think well this is really important and you've got that a, a sort of a grey area with a lot of things really but we we've got the best endeavours and I think that's that's the key really as a school if you you have the best endeavours but again the expectation from the government is the children are getting a full ambitious curriculum offer and to be able to do that you you have to um, 
you yeah. have to teach them all and you have to give them all those opportunities yeah you can't suddenly magically extend your classroom by god knows how many meters just so that you can fit in everyone's space between desks and things like that so i think that has been a big thing is you know make it like you say you've got you can only do you can only work with the tools that you've got and um making sure that the things that you think are important are definitely upheld so yeah i think that's the the definitely the um, an interesting way of of so getting the kids together but also keeping them apart is it's a very tricky thing and um, if anyone else like mark was saying if anybody else has got any kind of um things that they did in their schools in terms of like logistics of lunch times and break times feel free to put them in the chat and we can always add them to our to our blog so um I know uh, to speak, Anna. yeah can ahead. i say something Oh, yes. Hello everyone, by the way. Um, yeah, I was just interested in what you said, Mark. It's that necessity, as your mother had been mentioned, isn't it? You know, all the things that we've had to do and I've, uh, I've had to adapt. And I was really interested in what you said about the... Uh, we've not got streaming, we've got something else going on now, aren't there? <laughs> um, what are they doing? They're sewing. They're sewing! Oh, we've got, gone up a notch now, they're sewing. Um, yeah, so it, it's that idea of having these online... Uh, reading uh, records, reading journals, um, you'd never probably thought to do that, would you, apart from this? And now if it turns out to be a winner, it's kind of like, well, these are all the positives, aren't they, from this kind of situation, really? Um, mm. And it's a bit like us with the curriculum, you know, the way that we've developed it over that year, because of lockdown, we had time to do things <laughs> that we wouldn't have had time to do as well. So um, that's all I wanted to say. I'll shut up now and leave it to it. Um. I'm going to come back to the key worker children. We had a little, Mark, Ali and I had a little discussion before we let everybody in, um, just about um, the kind of, almost kind of a bit of a mental health question on how children have reacted to each other. Um, obviously, there's been some children who have been there for the whole time they've been in the classroom. Though that starting off with that very small group of 16 children, they've been in school for the whole time. So they're, the, their parents' working conditions. Um, have you noticed a little bit of tension, a bit of friction as more and more children came back into the classroom? Well, from the from the first lockdown, as, as we said, we, we were only averaging about six children a day and the vast majority are at home for that long, long, long sort of spring summer period. We had all that glorious weather. But before we broke up for the summer holidays last year, um, we were really, really keen to invite all of the children back for something. And when we got to that summer and we had year, we had um, some year groups sort of steadily coming back and we were really keen to get some of the other year groups in for something. So we arranged some outdoor events um, for each year group to come and do some outdoor events on the field, all spread out. Um, over the summer term and each year group came in for about an hour, an hour and a half to do these outdoor um, sort of like sports day summer fair type events and we hadn't seen these children for quite a few months and one of the stark things that we'd noticed with these children coming back was so many of them looked pale uh, lots of children had seemed to have put on weight and it was the physical thing of wow that there's been three or four months of, of not being at school and you can just see from a physical point of view first of all some effects of that of just being at home um, also they looked quite anxious lots of the children coming back into the school grounds for the first time so it was it was, it was really eye-opening at that point to think wow there's there is going to be this this impact here that's going to manifest possibly for a long time with, with lots of children um when we came back in september because we all came back and it was start of year new classes and all those kinds of things it felt a bit more normal because it was normally when kids come back in September they've had those six weeks off and you still get those anxious children that have been off school for six weeks it's just that it was more like six months yeah. um, so it felt more more normal um, but because it was the vast majority of our children coming back after such a long time off we were able to implement a recovery curriculum for the whole school which we did for about two or three weeks we used um, Barry Carpenter's Oxford Brooks recovery curriculum um, which everybody took on and those seven or eight children as i said that had been coming in before then 
were less perhaps needing of that but still they were getting quite used to being the only ones at school mm -hmm. and for them the other children coming back was was interesting uh, for them yeah. to adapt as well but after the second lockdown uh, it wasn't as noticeable I think we had the children at home doing a lot more work mm -hmm. and we had a higher engagement of children doing work we had our live sessions every week with them so once or twice a week we were seeing the children and the, and mm -hmm. the children were seeing us as well we had a lot more children in school who then didn't as I said weren't at home for such a long period of time so it was a lot easier coming back from the second lockdown to get on quicker we still did some recovery curriculum work but only for a short amount of time but where we have had children um, struggle individually we have had I'm sure all schools have had children that have, have struggled and found it more challenging we've had to obviously put in extra interventions and some well-being work for them and their and their mental health and getting them back into school so we've had that but only with as i said certain individuals in smaller numbers but i think the whole feeling of we're all in this together every we've the second lockdown i think children seemed to be more resilient to it because um, they'd gone through the first one yeah i think that i think that is one thing that has come out of this is there is definitely a resilience and a a, a, an ability to cope with change um, has, has, has come out in a lot of children. You know, we've noticed it here as well. You know, a lot of kids now are quite, you know, oh, you know, if someone turned around and said, oh, we're going to have to close school again next week, they go, okay, well, are we just going to Google Classroom again? Yeah, we're just going to do Google Classroom again. So mm. I think they kind of, you know, it's not quite such a shift in their, in their life and their, um, and their, I think it's the word, but like their kind of schedule in a way, you know, their, their daily routine wouldn't change a huge amount. Let's just hope that it doesn't have to happen again <laughs> in any kind of form and we can continue to make things as normal as possible. But yeah, I think the um, the fact that you haven't seen resilience in, in your children coming back this time, they're a bit more amenable and flexible with changes and is, is really good. Um, let's just hope things continue in the right direction and they can start to Get a, big, get a bigger bubble, as it were, every now and again. Um, I'm conscious that it's getting close to quarter two, so I'm just going to finish off and ask you about reporting because, again, through the, uh, a lot of the primary leaders chat, and there's a lot of inner stuff about what reports are going to look like um, and how are they going to manifest themselves. Um, so what kind of things are you going to put in place for your reporting at the end of the year? So going back up to the, just the first lockdown briefly, we, um, we did an interim school report. So our normal report format would be um, reading, writing and maths, judging where the children are in terms of their, um, their attainment level and obviously giving them an attitude grade and so on. And then some kind of comments on the foundation subjects and then some general comments and attendance data and normal normal sort of report so we, when we did for the first lockdown because the children obviously were off for a long period of time we had got to about half we had taught them for half the year so we gave them a bit of a downsized interim report at, at some point i think it was maybe spring two summer one um that they had at that point was just a shortened version really of our normal report we've just been finalizing our end of year report format now for this year and it's somewhere between the two so it's not as shortened as our interim report version but it's not perhaps as full as a, as a full school report so we're still going to be commenting on the reading writing and maths we're still going to be commenting on um the foundation subjects and there'll still be general comments and um, we're also going to be putting where they are in terms of their attainment but it's going to be a, a version sort of slightly smaller than normal but also with the guidance to parents just to make it really, really clear that um, in terms of where we're tracking their attainment that parents understand the impact of the lockdowns because they they're going to be generally lower than they would have been normally for, for certain things. So I think parents just, we're keen to communicate with our parents that um, this is a report based on what the last school two, the last two school years that we've had. So therefore there will be some slight tweaks and changes, but, but really it will look very much like a normal school report for us and teachers will have, um, the opportunity to comment in there about the remote education and, and so on if if they need to but I think parents were at home with their children when they were doing the remote education so perhaps they don't need as much 
input on what that was like because I think parents knew exactly what that was like. I think parents are going to be very keen to know how they've adapted to being back at school, how they're catching up, where the gaps are for the things that they've missed and, and so on. So they're going to be probably the key things in the reports for, for parents. Yeah. I suppose you may need to include the, you know quite a bit on sort of like the social side of things and how they're coping in that in, in more of a pastoral sense you know like you say that they've seen the work that they've been having to do that's been very kind of um just very discreet really it's very obvious what it is that they've been doing but in terms of their well-being in terms of coming back to school how they're socializing with friends and they you know have they adapted, have they, like you said, been resilient to change? You know, those are kind of some of the things you need to know. Have you kind of noticed in terms of attainment, you've, you know, some kids have sent work back that's been spectacularly done, let's say, <laughs> and then they return and yeah. it's almost like they're a different child. <laughs> How are you kind of coping with those kind of, you know, obviously that, that work that comes in from, G, from the Google Classroom is that is their work, you would hope. Um, so are you, are you kind of being aware of that or are you just taking from what you take as caught as in class now? It's interesting because my daughter's in year seven. So she's mm -hmm. obviously not in primary school, but she, so she's in year seven. And, and my wife was able to be at home with her for her mm -hmm. remote education. And she's an only child. So whenever she needed support and help, my wife was there to support and help her. And um and my daughter actually did fantastically well with her remote education. She had a full off, full offer and um, and she was getting so much more done than she was tell, said that she would get in school. There's much more distractions in school, perhaps with, with classmates or, or whatever it might be. And, and actually having a one to one adult, if you like, at home, that focus, um, she did brilliantly. So her work was great and she was getting some really good feedback from her teachers and and we knew that we weren't doing it for her but we were just there to support her if she needed somebody to support her so so going to back to our children in school i imagine that some children would have benefited in a strange way from lockdown perhaps the younger children or certain children that that wouldn't have had that might have had a parent or two parents at home giving them so much support and, and time so we're aware of that at the same time we're aware of of children that would have had as you hinted to there perhaps parents doing things for them or doing so there might be an element of that with some children as well we're also aware that some children weren't really supported by their parents and their level of work actually might have come down yeah. because at school they've got all of those um, peers around them doing the same similar tasks they've got the teachers modeling and, and, and much more support and at home they had a lot less support so so again we had a range and i think we just took everything um with a sense of realism that everyone's got their own circumstances and the key thing for us was keeping the children doing and yes there might have been some parents maybe helping more than they should have done and there might have been parents unable to help at all but keep children doing keep them having those routines having that connection to school and we know that over time and i think it will take a long long time but over time the children will catch up and it might not be while they're with us it might be eventually as they move on in three or four or five years in the future uh, into their secondary school times but but we know that they will catch up and since they've been back at school because we've had to really narrow and, and push lots of the key things in school from an English maths point of view um, and have that focus and we've had extra adults and extra tuition and, and lots of these things, although may not be the long term way forward, but we feel like in our school we have caught children up and they've made quicker progress than they would have done if COVID hadn't happened at all for this time of year. So. So it works in both ways. I think it will be very, very interesting whenever normality resumes completely. It will be very interesting to see how schools amend their approaches and um, and what they choose to to revert back to and what they don't. And if if kids have made rapid progress, will there be that, that expectation that actually this rapid progress should be the norm from now on? And is that mm -hmm. going to be the expectation of schools? And that's something in the back of my mind as well. So time will tell. Yeah, I think that's the thing, you know, you've got, like, like you said, you've got some, stu some students who have, have, it's even if, like you say, with your daughter, for example, you know, you, you, your wife's not there doing the work for her, but just being able to have that immediate kind of like one-to-one -one support, really, you know, some kids just absolutely thrive and, and plow through work. That's another thing as well, we could talk again for even longer on the amount of stuff that gets sent home, you know, you've got some families who are saying, we, we haven't, we're, 
we we're snowed under there's too much and then you've got some people going there's not enough they're getting through it all so that's a, you know a conversation for another day but um yeah and then you say like you've got some kids who potentially um have just having to do the work by themselves and you see a, a change in their um, attainment so it's almost like school is, is a very much a leveler isn't it i think that's what people have realized school is a bit of a leveler because they're all getting that same input um, rather than some kids getting loads and some kids getting none so yeah that's interesting and it's nice to hear that your reports are going to stay very similar you know similar format and not too much is going to change there that's really interesting um ali do we have any questions on the chat um, no, we've had, um, and obviously people have shared their experiences a bit when we've been talking about different things, which is great to hear and really interesting. But no, we haven't got any um, questions we need to cover. So I think we've probably covered everything that we wanted to talk about, unless there's anything that anybody's got as a last request. Has anybody got anything they've done, like Mark with these reading journals, um, that they want to share um, that might be useful to other people to hear about? all you're welcome to unmute yourself and and speak if you'd rather um so for you obviously yeah. have quite a bit of space don't you should we do sign language yeah there we go that's better i've got, got it all right okay. yeah we're we're really lucky we've got quite a big site so we've yeah. actually we used to be two schools so we, we're kind of split site which has helped in some ways and has hindered it is in others because it's a big site for parents to drop off so we did have to do staggered drop-offs which we're just looking at getting rid of yeah. um but we had as i said we'd already split play times which if you haven't done it and you've got lots of children i would strongly suggest you give it a go um because it's just just so much better for the children the children love it right. um but it did mean that we've been able to have designated areas and so year three four go out at a different time to year five six but it means that we've got enough areas for them all to then cross over um and we're very lucky we've also got school wood so we've also still been able to get the children out every fortnight for their kind of forest session so so we have been a bit spoiled i have to say yeah great and you're in uh, nottingham aren't you we're in nottingham yeah yeah okay okay well if we've not got any further questions or any further comments um then i think we'll bring our little webinar to a close i hope it's been informative i hope you've found some things out just nice to hear what other people are doing with their um with their setup and their school um thank you so much to mark for joining us for our first one and being our being our little guinea pig on this one <laughs> um, squeak so. squeak yeah it's been it's been lovely to chat with you mark and find out what you're doing and i really hope that um 17th of may 21st of june brings some positive changes and hopefully um some back to some normality into the summer term so um thank you for joining us it's been great to see um some familiar faces and some new faces which is great and um we'll hopefully bring you another webinar soon if you've got anything that you want us to talk about, um, any pressing issues that you think we should have a discussion, then feel free to just drop us an email um, at Dimensions and we can um, hopefully arrange that soon. So thank you very much. Um, you are free to go. Brilliant. <laughs> thank you. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Nice to thank see you. you. Take care. Bye. Bye.